So a lot of people want to be wealthy, but the problem is that many aren't putting in the effort into the right places or aren't putting in the effort at all. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, my name is Justin, and today I'm going to be talking about the secrets to getting wealthy. Recently, I've been reading a book, and forgive me if I butchered the name, called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. And this book has put into words so eloquently a concept that I've had in my head forever, which is that in order to become wealthy, you need to have leverage. Okay, so this is why the concept is so important. If you're anything like me, you're probably studying in school right now or already working, and the entire idea of having to work until you're 60, which is the retirement age, is complete torture for you. That's another 40 years for me from my current age. And so figuring out how to escape this torture or this need to work has been my goal. And this concept of leverage, I think is fundamental to doing so. Okay, so before I go any further, I do think it's important to define the two terms that I've been talking about, which is what does being wealthy mean and what actually is leverage. So the first one, being wealthy, I think is quite simple. It is essentially being able to generate passive income. When you're sitting at your future beach home, you want to be having something generating money in the background as you're there. And that's different than just being rich or having a lot of money because being rich and having a lot of money doesn't necessarily equate to not having to come into the office. You might still need to come into the office as a salaried employee and in order to get your paycheck, you still need to put in the hours. That, in my opinion, is not actually being wealthy. And the second term, leverage, is the ability to affect someone and the ability to do that at scale. You essentially want to be able to affect more people than if it was just yourself. And I think the reason why defining these two words are really important is because it kicked out of my head and hopefully it's going to kick out of your head really fast that just having a salaried position doesn't ever mean that you'll become truly wealthy. Because even if you're a doctor, lawyer, engineer, earning that six-figure salary, you will never be able to truly escape it until you make more of an impact beyond yourself. And look, I would know, I'm an engineer right now, and while I'm quite okay with the job, I still need to wake up day after day, mentally exhausted, thinking that I need to do this for the next 40 years until I hit retirement. In no way do I think that this career will ever make me truly wealthy and let me have time to myself. Now let's get on to the type of leverage. There are basically three main ones. The first one is labor, which is simple. It's hiring more people. But this one's quite a dangerous one too, because if you're anything like me and you're an introvert, you definitely don't want to talk to other people. That's why I became an engineer. The second type of leverage is money and using money in order to multiply the impact of your decision. So things essentially like investing and real estate. Now, while I do personally do investing and I do highly recommend it, I will say you still need to be careful because if you're one of the ones or you know anyone who did invest in Doge at the very top, or actually at the very bottom, you will know that that decision goes both ways. It can go extremely up or it can go extremely down. And finally, the third type of leverage and the one that I actually want to talk about today is replication or replication at a low cost. Now this can take many forms such as books, code, content creation, all these sort of things fall into the idea of replication at a low cost. You're able to replicate these things and distribute it to many people at once. And this type of leverage is probably one of the most powerful and most equalizing because it's essentially permissionless and has a low barrier to entry. As long as you have a computer, no one's going to tell you that you can't upload your code. No one's going to tell you you can't write a blog. No one's going to tell you you can't upload a YouTube video. Even Mr. Beast has made a video literally just counting from one to a hundred thousand with millions of views on it. There is no one who's going to stop you from this form of leverage. With the internet, you can replicate an impact at scale. Look at Joe Rogan. Just with his podcast alone, he earns 50 to a hundred million dollars a year. PewDiePie, one of the top YouTubers, also earns about 50 to a hundred million dollars a year. You can see the leverage these guys have because if they do something, they can influence the world. This is a new era, and those who know how to play the game will. It's no longer poor versus rich, blue collar versus white collar, it's leveraged versus non-leveraged. And also because I'm a software engineer and I'm in the tech industry, I specifically love the example that the book points out. Forget 10 times programmers, there are a thousand times programmers out there. Look at Notch, the creator of Minecraft. He sold his company to Microsoft for billions of dollars. Look at Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. He has essentially revolutionized the financial industry and has carved out a sector for himself. And even companies like Instagram, when it first hit a million users and eventually sold to Facebook, they only had 13 engineers on staff. Again, replication is one of the most powerful and equalizing ways to play the game today. So 
will you play the game? Anyways, that's it for the video. If you liked it, hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, Discord community, check out the link down below. And if you're planning to build wealth yourself, let me know about your own journey. How are you going about it? And I would love to hear about how you do it. Anyways, see y'all next time and peace out.